Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for August 19th, 2019 at 7 p.m. Um, we'll start yeah, off we'll with roll call from Ms. Burner. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Shammy. Ms. Hopkins. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Five members present. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, and let's see here. All right. Invocation tonight, we'll have an invocation by Councilman Bill Cook. Please stand, please. Please bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, as we come together again, please grant us the wisdom to provide to the citizens of this city our utmost in the best way that we know how. Please bless all of the people assembled here, our firefighters, our sheriff's deputies. With that, we thank you in your name. Amen. Amen. And the pledge, right? The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need uh, actions on the uh, minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting of 8 1 19. So moved. Second. Okay, first. I think Mr. Okay. Lindsay. And the second was Mr. Cook. Okay. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Minutes accepted? Fives? Zero. Thank you. Communications, Mr. Bridge, if you will, please. Yep, yeah, me one second. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We do have a guest in the audience tonight. I'd like to introduce Mr. Charles Patterson. He is the health commissioner for Clark County, and he is from the Clark County Combined Health District, and he is here to discuss the community health assessment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I've provided you uh, a one pager, uh, but it happens to be one page, one on both sides. I've got some extra copies that I will leave right back here on the table for any citizen uh, who might want to pick one up. Uh, a little over a year ago, we came out and we talked about some, some public meetings that we were having to begin the process of our community health assessment. So the community health assessment's not finished yet. Uh, we've collected a bunch of data. We've done four different assessments, as you can see on the blue circle there. Um, we've done the community themes and strength assessments, local public health system assessment, community health status assessment. That's the one you're most familiar with, is pretty much what we've done in the past, just that single assessment. And then the forces of change assessment. We brought all those together, and we put those basically on the website. But on the flip side, when you can see this chart with the priority topics across the top, you can see that our steering committee has come up with behavioral and mental health, chronic disease prevention, and maternal and infant health and sexual health as the three main topics. Uh, below that, you'll see some cross-cutting factors and cross-cutting strategies. But what I really want to point out to you and the citizens today is midway through the first page, there is a link here for you to provide any feedback. So anyone who does not have access to a computer and would like to have the survey in writing, call the health department. We're happy to provide that to you. We can mail it to you or drop it off at your house. We have people from the health department in all corners of the county pretty much every day. Um, and we're looking at this point to see if you agree with those priority topics that the steering committee has come up with from all of the different uh, all the different assessments that we've done. Also on that link is access to all of the data that's been generated from all the different assessments. So I mean it's pages and pages. If I, I couldn't bring it to you because it would be a fairly large volume for each of you to look at. Um, and once again if somebody wants to see that we can work with them to get that data and make it more available to them. But we're really at this point looking for feedback because very shortly, by the end of September, we're gonna finalize the community health assessment 
and we're going to use the last couple of months of the year to come up with our community health improvement plan for the years 20, 21, and 22. So basically, the direction we're going to go and the focus and the SMART goals, the strategic goals that we're going to take forward, that we're going to focus here in the community on trying to improve the health of our citizens. These are all based on the Robert Wood Johnson County Health Rankings. Um, as you know, recently we, we moved the wrong direction down to number 80 out of 88 counties. And that's predominantly because the opioid deaths that we saw in 15, 16, and 17, um, they really have a heavy weighting in the rankings. Unfortunately, it will take us three years to get out of that cycle because they look at a three years of data, 15, 16, and 17. So next year, they'll look at 16 and 17 and 18, which we're moving in the right direction, but we're still not there. It's going to take us three more years to get out of that cycle where we had over 100 opioid deaths in 2017. So unfortunately, those are going to sort of be on our grade card for three more years. Uh, in the meantime, there are things we can do, especially focused on infant death, prevented unwanted births, and uh, sexually transmitted disease to make sure that we've got things for diabetes, heart disease, and uh, COPD, constructive pulmonary disease, and also that we're looking at continued focus on substance abuse because just because fewer people are dying from opioids does not mean that we have licked that. There are still a lot of, a lot of folks that have uh, substance abuse disorder and addiction issues and we need to continue watching those in our county and making sure that we can get people away from those uh, abusing substances. I'd be happy to answer any questions, but the major point was to come back out and tell you that, that we're done with a certain portion of that and we're now looking for the community's feedback once again. Council, any questions? Mr. Passon, thank you for coming. I just wanted to ask you something, and it's kind of off topic, I guess, if you will, but what, um, where are you guys at with, like, uh, smoking and e-cigarettes and things of that nature? Okay, so um, we, we're, we're for very... Me personally, I mean, I know cigarettes are bad, but e-cigarettes I despise for some reason. It just, I cannot stand the sight of it. It just bothers me. So one of the things that has really happened uh, just in the last month is the leg Ohio legislature pushed by the governor. Our new governor, DeWine, is very pro-health and he's very pro-children. And one of the things that he insisted on being in the budget bill, which passed, was the, the sale of tobacco used to be 18 and above in Ohio. October 1st, that sale is going to go to 21 and above. And the idea is that most people that smoke develop that habit prior to the age of 21. And if we can hold them off a few more years, research and science is showing us that there is less chance that they're going to take that up in the future. It also includes vaping materials. So as of October 1st, the, uh, anyone under age 21, even those that can buy it today, tobacco or vaping products, will no longer be able to buy those in Ohio legally. And so it's all about enforcement at that point, and we're actually working, uh, we meaning public health in Ohio is actually working with the governor's office to make sure that there's appropriate enforcement of that. Okay. Uh, people, people right now who are 18, 19, and 20, they're not going to like that enforcement, uh, but the fact is it's one of those things where, as we've said to our kids at times, um, you know, you don't have to like me, what we're doing is for your own good. Right. Um, some people think it's more of a nanny state, but this has proven to work. It's proven to work in other cities across the country. There are nine cities in Ohio that have already adopted T21. Um, we were actually coming to you. Uh, um, Mayor, you signed a document that said you didn't promise us anything. All you said is that you promised us that you'd work with us mm -hmm. to see if there was something we could do here in New Carlisle. I now believe that that's unnecessary because the state has now gone to, to the Tobacco 21 uh, and we here in Clark County are committed 
the doing whatever the best practices are to reduce that vaping. Um, I just read a, an article in Minnesota where a bunch of teenagers were treated at the local hospital for, for overdose of nicotine because of the vaping. So we know it's causing problems and, and we know it's something that we have to keep a close eye on. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Just a reminder to the citizens, I am leaving some extra copies of the form right back here on the table if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. All right, down to City Manager's Report, Mr. Bridge. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the City Manager Report. And give me one second to get there. And we'll start off with our finance uh, report with our finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. Good evening, council and members of the public. Uh, tonight I bring you a report. Uh, the July total revenue for the general fund was $12,206.75. July's total expenses of the general fund was $102,712.74. There's um, a couple of factors that the expenses were high for July. We had some special events to pay for. Um, we've been paying auditor fees, um, different things like that. So that's why that's a little high this month. But year to date, our total revenue collected $3,544,422.97. And our year-to-date expenses are lower at $3,273,991.51. I do have a full report here also. And this one I included the transfer, so it shows the transfer was done. So with the transfer, um, the profit is $25,028.71. Council, any questions for spots? Mr. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, this is probably more for you for the city manager. <laughs> when will the pool close this year? Uh, Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. It'll be the last day. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, the, uh... That's good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you very much, Ms. Watson. Appreciate the report as always. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the city manager report, our service uh, uh, service report, uh, I will be reading that on behalf of Mr. Kitko. Uh, he was excused from, for tonight's uh, meeting. Uh, service department updates. Uh, he has reported that com he has completed some minor road repairs in, in areas that need uh, an air in certain areas. Uh, some areas need, uh, need more in-depth repair, such as ruts created from the trash operations. I know he has started on that. Storm drains on Main Street. So if anyone has uh, seen orange code, uh, cones on those, we are getting estimates to replace those with new structures. Um, I do have a note here that if the storm drain catch basins, if the, plate, if the new plates are not installed by Heritage of Flight, I mean, if the new things aren't installed for Heritage of Flight, they will put plate on them for pedestrian safety. Uh, citywide street street will occur within a month. Uh, we'll uh, get information out to alert residents to not park on the certain streets. The comes to trail overgrowth to be boom armed and mowed by the county. So what that means is all the overgrowth, they take this big thing and it goes along the edge, and cuts all back all the stuff that hangs over. 2018-2019 uh, various road projects. Gelwood Drive reconstruction project. Uh, that reconstruction is underway. New curb has been installed, new aprons have been installed, and the new road base with new stormwater structures has also been installed. So a lot of progress up, uh, up on the Gelwood project. Uh, T.C. Holzen was awarded the contract, and that was for $334,639.50. The new Carlisle Street levy share is approximately $41,400. Another street worth resurfacing projects, this one at Hemlock, Butter, Butternut, and Bitter Street are complete except for one manhole adjustment. That cost the city approximately $45,420.66. We uh, just had some legislation not too long ago about our wastewater plant. Uh, I know, I think he mentioned it last time at the last council meeting, but I'll just go ahead and reiterate that. Uh, Peterson Construction was awarded the contract. Uh, so that is a new bar screen and a new affluent pump. Uh, they are ordered, and it's about a 12 to 16 week build time. Uh, equipment will be installed upon their arrival and we ordered that about two weeks ago. Traffic signal upgrade project. Plans will go out for bid on September 12th of 2019. Uh, contract will be awarded on 92319, and construction is to be completed by 831 20. 
Uh, any questions on the service department? I will try to answer them or get an answer to you. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? No. Mr. Bridge, I had one. Okay. Sorry to catch you off guard on this. I just wanted to ask. I know we brought it up a couple times. Uh, the curbs up on Main. I know we've talked about it a lot. How, how much work would it take to at least get some letters out to those property owners? Um, last time I talked to Howie about this, I don't want to repeat it because I just want to make sure I heard him correctly. So no one take my word for this, even though I'm on YouTube and it's going to be on minutes. <laughs> Um, I'm almost positive that would not be the responsibility of the, of the business owner, so we are going to look into that. Okay. If that is the case, we'll go ahead and take care of that from the city side of things. If not, we will definitely put a letter out to our residents. But it is an area that we should really pay attention to because it's our downtown. Uh, we just let's get through these summer projects and okay. we'll, we'll, we'll touch base on that again. Thank yep. you, sir. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Kitko? Yes, sir. Okay, you one second to note that Main Street curb question. Okay, we'll move on with the city manager report and our fire report with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, Council, and citizens, uh, for the month of July, New Claw Fire Division responded to 78 EMS calls in the city, 16 uh, EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to fi four fire related calls in the city, zero in Elizabeth Township. At up to date, we're run number 792. We had uh, we had four EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark, due to Medic 52 being on response. We answered three mutual aid EMS calls for Pike Township, and we answered two EMS calls for Bethel Clark. In the month of July, the division responded to two overdose calls. We also the fire division has hired eight new employees, two firefighter paramedics one firefighter EMT advanced and five firefighter EMTs. Uh, approximate time for them to be actually in the street is probably 30 days, 30 to 45 days. Council, any questions or comments for Chief? Yes, Mr. Mr. I'll get Mr. Cobb. Okay. Mr. Trustee, are you still planning on hiring more people? Yes, sir. I mean, I know you've got the second Medi-Cal a few times. I've mm -hmm. noticed that. Okay. As we can, I mean, it's it's one of those things also too, um, trying to keep the rolls up, but also trying to make sure that all the hours are filled and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Good, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, Chief, uh, you guys do an awesome job as usual. Mm -hmm. The uh, I want to thank the uh, people who stepped up, that the eight people that just was hired to step up to volunteer or as part paid to uh, join our department. And uh, hopefully we'll get to see them at some point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else for the chief? Thank you, chief. We appreciate all the work. Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, fire chief trustee. And moving on to city manager report, uh, our here uh, is our police report with deputy Allender. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Um, Sergeant Underwood couldn't make the meeting today. So I'm going to just um, let you guys know what he prepared. So in the month of July, new call deputies were dispatched to 58 calls. Of those calls, there was one assault, um, 11 domestic violence calls, seven thefts, three non-injury crashes. Uh, we didn't take any injury crashes. Seven citations were issued, two drug complaints, zero overdoses, four suicide attempts, and two burglaries. Uh, last month, we had a theft that turned into a robbery at the Dollar General store. When deputies arrived on scene, there were two women in the store that had stolen merchandise. When deputies entered the store, one of the women outside got into her car. As she started to leave, Deputy Moody then tried to turn off the ignition. And as she backed up, Deputy Moody's arm was still in the vehicle. Deputy Moody was able to remove his arm as she fled the scene. She was charged with a felonious assault and felony fleeing a police officer. And then I believe she also um, faced charges of robbery and maybe a few traffic violations as well. Uh, Deputy Moody was not injured um, as a result of that. Deputies made two drug trafficking arrests and also shut down a drug house that was located on West Jackson. School starting this week and deputies will be monitoring traffic and writing citations when necessary. As a reminder, most of New Carlisle streets are 25 miles per hour. Again, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call that we need to solve a crime. And that's all I have. Thank you, Deputy Allender. Council, any questions or comments from Deputy Allender? 
Mr. Cobb. Deputy Alexander, you and the Chief Trustee with the Fire Department made that kid's birthday. I say thank you for that. They, they really love it from what I hear. Yeah, they had, um, I, I believe the, the mother had kind of been in contact with Sergeant Underwood about that. He wanted to know if somebody could stop by there. So um, I had contacted, you know, the, um, the fire department and who was working that day and we went out there for about 20 minutes or so. So they really, really enjoyed that, seeing the vehicles and the apparatuses and things like that. So it was, it was good, it was, a, it was a fun time. Well, thank you for caring. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Council, any other questions or comments for the deputy? Thank you, Ms. Allender. Keep up the good work. Mr. Bridge. Uh, thank you, Deputy Allender. Moving on with the city manager report under informational items. Uh, TCC annual meeting. Um, attended that annual meeting on 8, 9 of 19. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Vice Mayor Lindsay and also Service Director Howard Kiko for attending. I do believe that you guys sit on some of their boards for them. But it, it was a great event, great lunch, great company. So thank you so much for going and, and sitting there with me. I know at the last council meeting we had some discussion about sound enhancements here in, here in the shelter house. I did already go have, uh, have our first meeting on that. Me and, Kiss, me and Mr. Kitko met with Jason Hanrahan from the Bridge Group. That is the same company who's back there recording our uh, meeting tonight. Uh, he also does sound work. So we do have some preliminary ideas. Where we're looking at starting first is um, putting acoustical panels up on the ceiling in between the lights. So it's gonna be, they'll be hanging down vertically like this. We are also looking at putting some acoustical paintings on either side of the walls here, above where the line is. So basically we're uh, right above the new Carlisle logo on that side, right above the uh, flag on that side, just up high and also some maybe up here. Um, we are not going to try any kind of mic system yet because I, uh, the expertise we got was that they're just still hard surfaces and I think Mr. Grimm had mentioned that as well. But we're going to try with the basic acoustical panels first. Another thing I would like to look into depending on cost and council's uh, liking of it is I would like to get some sort of background to go from this side to this side uh, and have a big curtain go across so you guys are sitting behind a big curtain um, and that's going to help with a lot of the sound bouncing back up behind you. Um, we are probably going to start with the acoustical panels first, see how they do, and then maybe take it up a notch to do the background behind council after that. Um, right now we're going to uh, look at hand making the acoustical panels in house. We'll try to reduce cost, uh, but we have to start somewhere. We'll see how this goes. I am concerned about those panels taking away from the look of a sh and feel of a shelter house, but this is the council chambers on Monday nights and we need to be able to hear, our citizens need to be able to hear. So it's something we're gonna have to bounce out, see if it's worth it. But we need to let, let us get them installed first, see what we wanna do. I think it's gonna make a world of difference just by those, especially with the panels. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is actually putting carpet tiles in this uh, facility. Uh, square ca uh, carpet tiles, they're like two foot sections. If something happens, we can rip a single tile up and put it down, but that's gonna help out a lot with the echo on that too, it's gonna absorb some of that. Um, all of these are pretty cost effective measures to start off with. Uh, the carpet panels are not a done deal yet. Um, I don't know how council is going to feel about that. Um, but we need to make it a little bit more easy to and have a council meeting here. And the carpet, it is going to make it look a lot better than opposed to a dingy cement floor. My only concern with the carpet is we have to level this floor out first. So that's going to come down to how much we have in the pot for this year as far as remaining funds. And then if that's something we want to go with next year, maybe look at getting with council, get some citizen input on do we think carpet tiles are the way to go. Um, so that's an update on the sound that we have. Uh, I'll entertain any questions on that uh, at, the end of the meet, uh, at the end of this report. Also, a couple meetings ago, I had a, a, a gentleman by the name of George Libo come and give his little presentation on the Madison Street School. He had proposed the city giving him X amount of dollars, I do recall that being about $100,000 for him to come in and tear down and remove Madison Street School. We, of course, would be responsible to remove the asbestos before that, and I do believe the charge on that was 130. I have gotten numerous phone calls from Mr. Leibold last week uh, wanting to know where council stands with that. Is there any, has council had any discussion about this matter? Um, would we like to have some discussion now? Uh, we do have some other options on the table with that school. I am going to try to secure uh, block grant money again. Uh, we did 
similar to how we did it before, uh, but this time we would have to actually go through and use that money for repair of the blighted structure, demolition of the blighted structure, versus doing some street repair. So that's the, that's the trade-off we're going to have to have. That doesn't mean we can't continue with street repair solely on street levy funds. But, um, and then we can um, maybe get the land bank involved. So we still have options. Um, so I don't know how you, council wants to look at that, um, but Mr. Leibold is wanting kind of a feel from council. So what should I inform him? Is this something you guys want to maybe look at some things some more to see what your options are before you give a yes or no to Mr. Leibold? Yeah, is this something yeah. that his proposal just wasn't anywhere near you guys were thinking anyway? I'll just go, I'll just start down the line if you guys want, because I'm sure we all have something. Mr. Cobb, you want to go? Yeah. I can't see paying for the biggest part of the construction of the building give them the land. Okay, and that was the other component that Mr. Leibold would want the land for development after the project was done. Okay, fair enough. I say we go ahead and, and see what the land bank, uh, what that option is still available to us before we enter into any kind of agreement with Mr. Leibold. So look at other options first. I understand. Okay. Uh, I wasn't at that meeting. When he, when he was here, mm -hmm. I have heard bits and pieces of it. Uh, I would not be in favor of paying to have the building tore down and giving him the land, <clears throat> unless I knew how much the land was worth. And then they would be an offset to where he would only recover money when he sold the land. But I would be more in favor of, like Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cook said, go with other options, see what the land bank has to offer, and see what other things you can come up with besides okay. besides him. So basically look at uh, other options. All right. Yeah, I would be in favor of saying no on him, uh, based on my what I know of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. His his price was he keeps the land and what was it? One he wanted a hundred thousand for okay. the removal yeah. and, and also one keep and the land. Uh, one twenty five to remove the asbestos. Well I, I think yeah I think <laughs> if he if he wanted if he wanted to if, if and I kind of misspoke up if he, if you guys wanted him to do this asbestos instead of us doing the asbestos, he would only charge us one twenty-five. Okay. So you would see a five thousand dollars savings on that, if if he would to remove the asbestos. Right. Um, but, but yeah. I you know my couple of opinions on it is I don't like the thought of using block grant money because I mean we've hit a big we've done a lot a big chunk of road repair in the past few years with that money. Mm -hmm. I mean I know that that building's an eyesore and it's a it's a it's kind of a big thorn in the side for the city, but at the same time, you know look at a lot of the roads that we've redone and we and we're still on track. I think to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how the the um, land bank. Thank you. How how does that work? Exactly. Land bank would do the same thing. They would come over. I don't know they, I, as far as financials, but they would get the land at the end of it too. So even if you went with the land bank, you would still have to donate the land to them because they want to develop that to kind of recoup what they lost to tear it down. Okay. Yeah. And back with the block grant stuff, and I think it's very nice looking at it like that. At some point in time, we're, the block grant money is a federally administered grant policy. Federal government has it. They give the money to the county. The county disperses it to qualifying cities. There's rules with that. And one of the big rules is that you have to use it in low to moderate income areas. So that's where we've got a lot of our street repair because those roads classify as low to moderate income, especially in the Northwood subdivision. You know, that's where we've knocked out Furnace and Galewood. Some point in time, we're going to run out of LMI, which is low to moderate income abbreviated streets to use the block grant money on. At some point in time, we're going to fix all we can with what we have available. <laughs> You know, so that could be at some point in time be now go over to blighted structures. And that's another component that you can use block grant money for to alleviate blighted structures. Um, so a couple years ago, the big question was, do we finish Prentice or do that? Council voted to do Prentice and put us to get it down. But at some point in time, we're going to have to have a heart to heart and a real eye opener about, all right, where do we see the school in five to 10 years? How do we see our road repair going? There's other ways to get road repair done by street levy money, but our street levy money is never going to be able to tear down that school. Mm -hmm. So we really have to be really creative with what the grant money we have coming in and how it can be best be used for our city. So we just have to keep that back from How many acres are there again? Ooh, on the school? Yeah. Seven is sticking out to me, but don't quote it. 6.9, yeah. I don't know what that land's worth, but you know, one thing I've, you know, I've heard a lot of citizens say is, and, and I agree, unless, unless that land was really needed for, say, new water, 
dollars for the city, which I don't mm -hmm. know if that would even be a place you could do something like that. But if it was needed for something that extreme, then I would say yes, we need to retain that land. But you know, numerous citizens I've heard say, you know, New Carlisle is not, you know, they're not in the business of owning real estate property all over town, and I, I actually agree with them. I mean, there was, no, you know, when we had all the Twin Creek parcels, you know, people were, you know, why do you have all that land? And you know, I think I've heard a few people say the same comment about. You know, if we tear down the school, now we've got another chunk of land, what are we going to do with it? So I like his offer, um, but I'm also interested in the, um, I can't ever remember the, the land bank. Thank you, land yeah. bank. Sure. So, but I do like his offer because I don't yeah. really see a need to retain the land. And, that, and that's the thing. We got two, I mean, say two areas here. We have Mr. Leibold's offer. We pay him. He keeps the land. The land bank, we may have to give him some money for, for not nearly as much as what we have to give Mr. Leibold. But again, the land goes away, whereas the block grant money, it's literally free money we might have it like a 10 or 20 percent match of that but it's done it's over and we still own the land okay so now it's clear and free of any kind of major structure does a developer want to come in and buy that well that's another sticky thing because right now it's zoned for r2 housing and that's like big yards big housing if anyone's going to make money back on that land through development it's going to have to be changed to something that allows some sort of multi-family housing and that itself is going to have to require a zoning change and we'll have to go through the planning board and get citizens input. So, you know, you really have to look at the overall parcel, what's on it, what has the potential to, for it to be if that school wasn't on it, and then likelihood of how long that's going to take. You know, I agree with you, we shouldn't own a lot of land, but sometimes it's a necessary evil. Right. It really is. Uh, but what I get from the question I asked is that we're still, uh, it's a mix of, we want to see our other options, essentially, before we would even make an offer to Mr. Light. <clears throat> Sorry. Ms. Hopkins. I was going to say, wait, I want to say. Hello. <laughs> um, I you. The rest of the council, I agree with everybody, with everything everybody said. But one of the most important things, I think, is uh, Mr. Is it libel? Mm -hmm. His offer. We need to see how much that land is worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, Debbie wants to speak. I did look on Clark I mean, County's lots. website, and the land is tax valued at $93,000, but that is not necessarily what you could, the land would go for. But on the Clark County's website, it is valued at ninety-three. And I agree. I used to sell real estate for 25 years plus, and the tax value is usually low, except for a few years ago when the county came through and raise the tax values to more than we could sell the properties but mm -hmm. they've kind of adjusted that so it's probably closer a little bit low and um, I'm really not keen about Mr. Leibel's offer because he's going to tear it down and we got to pay him if we could just give him the land and him tear it down I think it would be almost a wash but yeah. if he's going to charge us and on top of that we either have to get rid of the um, asbestos or take the thirty thousand. I mean, or pay him one hundred twenty-five thousand. So mm -hmm. um, I'd say no on his offer. Sure. But I also agree with looking into other options. The land bank is new to me. I hadn't heard about it before. Mm -hmm. But um, I do agree also, though, with the mayor that we do need to get rid of it. We've kind of had it long enough. Yeah. So. Like I'm kind of mixed, but I definitely would say no on Mr. Leibold's offer. Okay. Okay. Well, I will communicate this to Mr. Leibold, um, and that taxable income is it 93? It's 93 something. Okay. So can we assume if the school does get teared down, the value of that land is going to shoot down because it's valued because of the structure that's been improved upon, even though it may be no, vacant structure. That, that's not correct. I don't think. Uh, no. They're, they're valuing just the land. At yeah, that's well, just, it's just that's not the structure. The structure is right. valued right. separately. But a vacant piece of land is not worth as much of, if you approve it. Yeah. You go to improve it. Uh, no, this is no different if if we have a if you buy a plot of land just bare, you're going to pay it. But as soon as you build on it and you improve that, the value is going to go up. But that, there's now, two values on there. there sure, there's one a value for the land and one for the building. So that wasn't together, was it? Was that it? together? No, no, no. It's not. it was they not, was not together. Was separate. They have a very high amount, I can't remember exactly is, on the on the building itself, which is kind of amusing because it's really not worth that kind of <laughs> So you saw it land 93, not at the bottom number two. Correct, no. I stand no, correct. The land Thank is 93. You. Okay. And most, if you go and look at all the 
tax values, even on a home or a building, you'll have the value of the land and you'll have the value of the, the structure separate and improvements. Sure. Okay. So Fair enough. that's why. So I, we'll make sure we're all on the same page. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Hopkins. Anyone else? No. There you have it, Mr. Bridge. All right. I have one more thing on here I did not put on here. Uh, we actually will be closing at 3 o'clock this Friday on 823, and that is because we are having a citywide appreciation pool party for all city employees and their friends to come visit our swimming pool for th about three or four hours on Friday evening. So, Council, you are invited to that. Uh, please invite your immediate family members. There will be no admission for city employees. However, we do heavily encourage you to visit our concession stand to where you will have to pay for your food. Um, so we will give you free admission, but you'll have to pay to feed yourself. But we are very excited. This is the first time we've had a pool party for our city's employees in such a long time. And everyone needs to realize how much of a dedicated staff that we have at this city. That a lot of them who are the most workers, you don't get to see because they don't come to these meetings. So I'm very happy to give them some time off to enjoy themselves at our swimming pool. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Sure, council, any questions for the city manager? All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to comments from the members of the public. If you have any questions or comments, please go to the podium, give us your name and address, and keep it to five minutes, please. Anyone? I'm John Craybacher, 307 North Henry Street. I'm here to represent the new Carlisle Community Garden. Another option for you, Randy, is to give that land to the community garden for a dollar, and we can take care of it for you. How long is it going to take you to get down that school? <laughs> brick by brick. <laughs> I have a sled. <laughs> so basically in, what, 1,000 years from now? <laughs> About 1,000 years. There you go. Um, I, just want, I want to thank the city uh, for their help with the community garden again this year. Um, one of the, uh, the biggest things is our customer service from Chief Trusty. You know, I just give him a call, and, and we have four tanks back there, approximately about 270 gallons, 75 gallons approximately. And over the years, the city has provided the water, and the chief has provided the pumper to pump, you know, and actually the water into the tanks. And without that, we would not be very successful at all because of a lack of water. Um, and I also want to thank um, Rachel and the rest of the deputies. They come back and they patrol quite a bit. There's occasionally, um, I'm back there by myself, and you know, I wave to them. They see my red hat bobbing up and down or whatever, and you know, they know I'm okay. You know, and you know, I just want to thank you. And we're doing the same thing over at the Westlake property, the old Westlake property too. A lot of people don't know what's going on over there. Um, April does, because she walks past there in the morning around 10-ish or so. And uh, she sees the improvements that uh, we have been making on the, on the property. Uh, we have a native uh, a flower garden going on there, there where the uh, goal posts are and the scoreboard is. Uh, we, we planted um, uh, seven trees this year. And we're planning to plant another seven trees in the fall. And I just ordered another 20 from the Arbor Foundation free of charge. So, uh, and, and there, a lot of those are coming on its way. With greenhouses still in plan, uh, we're planning for the greenhouse and we're, I'm getting more and more excited about it. Um, you know, uh, and we're making a real presence also at the um, farmer's market, you know, this year, you know, we were been able to give uh, almost 100 pounds of, of tomatoes away. You know, we uh, there's a lady, uh, Sharon High, who uh, she she planted over 150 plants, tomato plants, and we're and they're still, you know, getting red. And the reason that you know that they're ripening is because of the water. The water is a very important thing. Uh, I'm trying to get water. We have a pump, and we also have water underground at Westlake, but we're trying to um, get that above ground now and to get them into tanks. I bought tanks the other day, uh, three tanks with a, from a friend of mine who had them behind his barn. And I said, what are you going to do with them? And, he's, and he just looked at me and he says, 
they're just sitting there. I said, let me have them. He said, come with the truck. So, you know, that's going to all be done, you know, very shortly. Um, the dog park is still, you know, in the planning stage. You know, uh, we did get some fencing. You know, we only got 82 feet of fencing. We need 200 and something plus, you know, to, for that. Uh, the corn that we planted that we didn't think was going to be corn, well, you got some ears this morning, uh, yeah. earlier. You got some ears earlier. And so we're, Westlake is almost producing more than Madison, but Madison has got more plants. But, you know, it's, we're excited about that. And, you know, a lot of our produce is being given to the food pantry. And they're really, really appreciative of that. Uh, we have got a, a tractor and, you know, we'd be glad to cut your grass for the land. <laughs> Mowed uh, on. Anyway, yeah, I just want to thank the city. Mowed on, huh? That's a lot of mowing. <laughs> That's okay. We, we, can be man, we can handle the mowing. Yeah. So anyway, I just want to thank the city, you know, for all that. <clears throat> Any questions of what's going to happen in the future? Or I know I've had a few FFA students beg me to bring it, and this is, don't even take this seriously, anyone, please. <laughs> beg me to talk to council and, and, and the community uh, garden about building a barn for their cows to be in the city limits. <laughs> Good luck like, in that. No, it ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> we would like to have chickens, but you know, no, that's so. probably not going to happen either. So. Thank you very much, Don. I appreciate all the work you guys do. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I have a question for Mr. Craybacker. Yes. Uh, you said that. Uh, which location has the water tanks that the fire department's filling? Madison Street. Madison Street. Do you have them at your other location too? Not yet. We do, mm -hmm. I just have a well. I'll, I'll, we have a well, okay. and what the plan is that uh, the well is going to be solar powered, and they're going to fill t the tanks up instead of using batteries for a reservoir. You know, we're going to and and once the the tanks get down so far, the <laughs> then the water will pump up naturally, pump up and fill the tanks up. Okay. That's, that's their original plan. When's that going to happen? Probably this fall is what, is what I'm assuming. I have, I have solar panels. I have the solar. I have everything in it. I just need somebody who can do it. Do you have your tanks now for over there that you just picked up? or have you? I haven't them picked them up yet. Okay. But um, they're out on Palmer Road, you know, behind a barn and ready to be ready to be picked up. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Craybacher. Any other comments for this evening? <clears throat> All right, moving on. Commissioner reports on the mic. Do you need to break this first? Yes. yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. yes. Just a second, Mr. Mayor. Did you have something? I think he's good. Okay, I just want to make sure you didn't need something <laughs> separate. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, in light of some conversation that the mayor and I have had uh, today, along with the city manager, yeah, we need to uh, break rules of council to add a second, uh, what am I thinking here? Executive, uh, session. executive session on for the discussion of a public employee that we was made aware of today. Uh, fly, go away. Uh, also, uh, need to add resolution 1909 to the agenda that uh was neglected and get, didn't get put on oh it was on it's just the title wasn't changed oh the title yeah yeah there was a resolution it wasn't the right one right it was. <laughs> so if i uh i i uh, so with that said i will put that in a form of a motion uh, and i'll second it she's getting us now i'm telling you <laughs> <laughs> You got it before I was done talking, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> you might want to repeat that. You might want to repeat it for Okay. Uh, so we're making the motion to change the agenda for resolution 19-13R titled to read a resolution amending the city of New Carlisle rules of council. Am I correct on that one? Correct. And then to add yes. executive session in order to discuss the employment of a pub public employee. Yes. Okay, and Ms. Hopkins, will there second? Yes. Correct. All right. Ready, Mr. Cobb? Break rules of count, right? Yes. yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. 
Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted, 5-0. And, and also, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, the uh, executive session that we just approved will be the first executive session this evening. That way, our city manager can get out of here and enjoy his evening. And then we will do the second executive session for the interviews of the council applicants. And real quick, Mr. Mead, I apologize. I walked right by. I didn't recognize you. First. It's been a while since the senior. I checked with the other people that were being interviewed this evening, and I did not ask you. So, are, are you, do you have time to hang out an extra 15 minutes or so tonight? Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Okay. So, moving on to uh, resolutions. All right. So we have resolution 19-13R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution amending the city of New Carlisle rules of council. Council. Oh crap! I do not explain. Right. Move that to the motions. So move. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, there was a cook on the second. Yes. Uh, this is a second half to the ordinance they amended uh, a few meetings ago regarding the mayoral proclamations. Council, any discussion? Mr. Cook. At the last meeting, it was brought up that this legislation is illegal. I have a problem in trying to find a where this is illegal. I furthermore would hesitate that any lawyer and or law director would present legislation to city council that could come back quote unquote to bite them, possibly get them to lose their license. If this is an illegal legislation, would somebody please give me a section of either the Ohio Revised Code or the Charter where this is illegal. This legislation was brought about due to a previous mayor doing proclamations and not informing the rest of the council what was going on. <laughs> I think that this legislation is necessary in order to keep the split on council down to a minimum by virtue of allowing all of council to be informed of any proclamations that are to be issued and getting their blessing. A while back we passed legislation on the ordinances that we must agree to before it goes to the law director. I see nothing wrong in this resolution, nothing illegal, nothing that ties the hands of the mayor. I'll rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Ms. Hop Ms. Hop Ms. Hopkins. I don't know if it's illegal. I don't think it's illegal, but I do think it does tie the hands of the mayor. And I don't think the council should dictate to the mayor who he can give a proclamation to. But then, on the other hand, I do think that the mayor should notify the council. And we did have talk about maybe presenting it here, you know, to the person so the council and the public could see it. That might be an option. But as far as to pass this ordinance and tie the hands of the mayor, I don't know why we would have a mayor then if the council controls it. That's all. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Or Mr. Vice Mayor, anything? No. Nope. Um, just my two cents on this, and I kind of said this the last time. Uh, this, was, this is kind of the second step into a, a process that was started prior to our previous mayor leaving. 
Um, and, and at that point, I fully agreed with this just because of past actions. Um, you know, we've talked about it a couple numerous times. I, at this point, I can see kind of both sides of it, um, but I feel that in the past, and I'm talking even before, you know, I was on council, uh, you know, with uh, people like um, Mr. McLaughlin and uh, Mr. Shackro and them. I mean, this this was never really an issue with them, and I don't I don't feel that we. I don't want to add needed, unneeded uh, boundaries, I guess, if, if it's not needed. I think if we can all, you know, try to get council back to where it was in those days, then I, I don't really see the need for this. Uh, at one time I did, I was 110% for it, um, but then once the, the previous mayor resigned, um, you know, that's where for me it was no longer needed. That's my two cents. Okay. Anyone else? Ms. Burner, when you're ready, please. Vice Mayor Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. No. Ms. Hopkins. No. Mr. Cox. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Motion fails. Two, three. All right, moving on when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay, moving on to ordinances. We have ordinance 19-20, public hearing and motion tonight. An ordinance to approve the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances to provide for the adoption of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances to provide for the publication of such new matter and to repeal ordinances in conflict therewith. Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept ordinance 1920. I second. Second by Ms. Hopkins. Okay. Explanation of this ordinance, uh, our charter codes every five years, I am to update our, our codified ordinances. So that what that says, you know, if they pass a ordinance that uh, uh, amends a setback requirements or anything that actually gets codified into our law, our charter states at least once, at least every five years, we are to codify them and put them online and make them all current. I like to do it about every year or any other year. That way, year five, we don't have a massive bill to do. Uh, this is four years, uh, 16, 17, and 18, so I went three years instead of uh, the two. Uh, but that's what this ordinance is. Uh, what it also does is update any kind of state law that we have that maybe deal with traffic, uh, maybe some fire stuff. So they do an all-encompassing code update, and that's what is in front of council today. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions mm -hmm. for Mr. Bridge? Ms. Burner? Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted. 5 0. Moving on to Ordinance 19 22, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Council. Mr. Mayor. Vice Mayor. Move to accept Ordinance 1922. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance, and you're going to have a very similar explanation for the next ordinance as well. Uh, every year we, li we light the streets that are outside of your house. Well, that is based <coughs> off an assessment, based off 60 cents per uh, linear foot that you have in front of your house. Every year we have to do a series of three ordinances, well, two ordinances and one resolution to get us to this point. We already did the resolution of necessity at the last meeting. Um, this one, this is an ordinance. Uh, state law says that they have to do ordinance to determine the need. Um, and that's uh, determining to proceed, I'm sorry. And that's what this particular legislation piece is. Again, we'll have a very similar de de uh, description for the next one with just a slight change. Thank you, sir. Any questions, council? Ma'am? Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? 
Uh, Mr. Bridge, just real quick, those lights provide just the perfect amount of light for shadow tag when you were like nine years old. So <laughs> yes. I'm glad that worked out for you in your tag game. <laughs> I agree with you, though. Yes. Did you say yes? Yes. I didn't I Sorry. Did, but I didn't. Reminiscing for a minute. Sorry. Sorry. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Motion passes four to one. Moving on to ordinance 19-24. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing <coughs> placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for mm -hmm. Did I skip one? Yeah, you gotta go 23 first. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought that didn't say, seem right. That's That's ordinance 19 23, <laughs> public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the <coughs> corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Council again. So moved. Except ordinance number 1923. Second. <laughs> and an explanation of this ordinance. Again, this is two uh, for the street lighting in front of your house. But this ordinance allows the levying of those assessments to do it. So the other one determined the need, and this one is allowing uh, the council to charge your property taxes. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions on this one? One question, Mr. Mr. Vice Mayor. Mayor. Mr. Bridge, just to clarify, the citizens, once this is passed and takes effect, instead of this going on their taxes at the auditor's office, they can come to the city building, somebody will look up what they owe, and they can write a check for that, correct? Yep. Uh, and thank you so much for the information. I actually have more information on that. The legal ad will appear tomorrow. It will run from 820 to 95, which is September 5th. You're able to come to the city building and pay your assessment between the hours of 7 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, what that will do is prevent a 4% fee that the auditor will put on your assessment if you pay it through your taxes. We're calling you tomorrow. Do what you need to do. <laughs> Thank you, sir. got the book ready to go. Any other questions, Council? Ms. Burnham. Mr. Cobb. No. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Motion passes four to one. <coughs> now, Ordinance 24. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get <laughs> Public hearing and action tonight an ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real estate taxes. Council. Did you say something? Yeah. I didn't hear it. I just said council. Oh. Anyone? Move to accept ordinance 1924, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I just learned a second. I'm second. Okay. <laughs> okay, an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, again, this is a yearly assessment ordinance we do. Uh, but basically, unfortunately, if, if you sign up for a water account and we have to turn it off and you do not pay us, we actually put a lien against your property taxes, and that's what this does. It's basically for delinquent utility accounts. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 19-25, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Thank you. Council? So moved. Second. There you go. And an explanation of this, uh, similar to our utility uh, assessment, this is for grass and weed cutting. So if we get a ticket, you get a ticket uh, for you to cut your grass, you don't do that. Uh, we go out and cut it for you, we charge you, uh, and then we put it onto your taxing, to your property tax, but that does have to be through council approval. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council, any questions? Ms. Burner. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Motion passes 5 to 0. Ordinance 19 26. Introduction tonight. Public hearing and action on 9 3 19. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds over $25,000 for the purpose of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio's annual audit 
of financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2018, and authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for said audit with the auditor of the state of the state of Ohio. Ordinance 19-27, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 9-3-19. And ordinance amending and restating ordinance 19-18, authorizing the adoption of the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020, and submitting same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Ordinance 19-28, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 9-3-19. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of a new sheriff cruiser in conjunction with the Ohio Cooperative Purchasing Act. Uh, before you, I'll, I'll add something to other business, but if you a break, I was gonna make, we'll need a motion to excuse Mr. Shammy tonight as well. So moved. Second. You're doing the same thing? Yeah, he's seconded. Oh, okay. As soon as we do this, I get you. All right. Um, Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion accepted by zero. Uh, Mr. Cobb, did you have a question before we go on another business? Yes, yeah, sir. On this 1928 on the cruiser? Yes, sir. I'd like to table that until we get a little, we see how the outcome is on the election next year for the uh, what, half percent? The police levy? So it's only being introduced tonight, so if that was going to happen, it would be at the next meeting. Yeah, two tables now. No, you have to vote on it to table it. Yep, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, right. Yeah. So it'll it have to sit till the next meeting and right. then it can, you can bring it up and table it then. Yeah. So it's just intro It's just an intro tonight. So it, just, it would have to be done at the next meeting. Good. Thank you, sir. And other business, Ms. Burner, when you're ready? Congressman Warren Davidson will hold, hold his That's mobile off, office hours. Okay at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Crime Watch meeting will take place Wednesday, September 1st? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I put in there for September 1st? Oh, man. <laughs> the 11th, all right. So the Crime Watch meeting will take place on Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. The city offices will be closed on Monday, September 2nd to observe Labor Day. Thank you very much. And moving down to executive session, uh, we will have two executive, se executive sessions tonight. One, we'll start off with uh, Mr. Bridge. He has to discuss employment of a public employee. And then we will go out of that one into the second one, which is to interview applicants for the empty council seat. And then after that, there uh, more than likely will be action after we go into a uh, regular session to appoint a new member tonight so with that being said you're more than welcome to stick around walk around in the park there's some swings over here they work great so um mr mayor mr vice mayor i move we uh go into executive session for the discussion of a public employee all right and then after that one we will go into the executive session for the uh, council interviews. interviews. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Just get it all in one. <laughs> yeah. No. Second. Second. Ms. Hopkins. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Yes. Motion accepted. Five zero. We'll take a quick five. All right. We are now back to regular se session. And uh, thank you all who applied again, and the interviews were very good, and uh, you know, learned some things about some of you that we did not know. Uh, you guys had some also some just consistent answers, which were, were interesting. Um, so I want to thank you all again. What we'll do is now is we'll open up to a or more uh, nominations um, from council to appoint somebody, and we'll go from there. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to open nominations. 
So we've got plenty of time to pass the petition. Yep. So. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we make a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Oh, not <laughs>